Hello, and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number two. In today's lecture, we'll say a little bit about uh, C++ params in general, and uh, a few concepts related to the uh, first uh, programming assignment, number zero, which you recently completed. And we'll wrap up uh, some important concepts from chapter one. Uh, to start off, I've loaded in a program that we worked on in a, a previous video, which we called uh, hello.cpp. And uh, this was our Hello World program, which you used as a model to complete the first programming assignment. And uh, in that assignment, you were required to print your name. So why don't we make this uh, print out my name instead. And I'll, I'll save the revision here. And we can compile and then run the program. Okay, compiling and now running and now I've got a program that prints out my name. Uh, as a reminder, if you ha um, haven't already uh, submitted the uh, that uh, programming assignment, you can still do so for uh, partial credit. Okay, well now let's talk a little bit about this uh, uh, program and and, um, and the other parts of it. Um, first of all, why don't we go through an order, starting with this line that we um, says pound include IO stream. Now, a uh, pound include uh, is um, includes what's known as a header um, or a, uh, a library file. In this case, um, this line pound include IO stream, I believe, will probably appear in every program we write. And IO stream is a library that um, C++ uses in order to be able to do input and output commands. Now, um, you know, what is a library? Well, certain functions and functionality is built into the language um, and is core part of uh, every C++ program. And, uh, but many features, uh, including features that you might think are kind of, you know, uh, basic and elementary, um, are actually brought in through uh, a library. And um, so uh, and it works a little bit like a, a real library. You know, if I asked you to write a paper on your summer vacation, you wouldn't probably need to do any um, uh, uh, references, uh, uh, you wouldn't need any references in order to do that, but if I asked you to write a paper on, you know, uh, some other topic, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, well, you know, pick, pick your, pick any topic, um, you might need to go to a, a library in order to get some books to have material uh, and references in order to do that, so um, that, that's kind of like what, what's happening here, um, and uh, um, some programs will include uh, several libraries uh, or s several headers in order to bring in all of the information or capabilities that they need in order to uh, uh, to complete. All right. Um, the next line here says using namespace uh, standard written as STD. Um, this is something else that's going to appear in every one of our programs, and um, we're not going to talk about this line or what it means. Um, we do discuss namespaces in CS19, which is a second comes in in the second semester of C++ programming. So for now, um, you know, uh, uh, we just put that in our, our each one of our programs. Um, next, we have this line here that says int main with a pair of parentheses and then an opening brace and then a uh, a closing brace here. Um, here, main is a function, and we're going to talk about functions. Uh, uh, coming up in a, a few lectures away, and so um, so uh, for now we just know that uh, each one of our programs uh, has to have a main function. Uh, over here it says int, that's the return type of uh, main, and uh, the parentheses here will have those empty for now. And then the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace enclose um, and group together um, several commands. And um, first of all, let me talk a little bit about the uh, braces. There's two main styles for how the braces um, look. And you'll see pr primarily, I believe, this style in the textbook, um, which is that the opening brace comes on a line by itself. Uh, and the um, other style, the one that I pre uh, predominantly use, is where the opening brace appears at the end of the line um, that it's connected to. In both cases, the closing brace um, is 
um, lines up with either the first character of the line that it matches or the um, position of the curly brace. And then commands that appear inside of the curly braces are indented. And that shows you that they, you know, belong or are inside of the curly braces. And then the point of the curly braces is to group those um, commands together. And the fact that they're attached to this function here, main, shows uh, that these commands here all belong to main. Now, what is main? Well, main is where the execution of your program begins. Many programming languages, including C++, share this feature in common. A main function, and when the program starts up, it looks for main. If you don't have main, your program won't work, uh, won't compile. Um, and um, the program will execute each one of the statements that is in, that's in your main function, and then end. Then the last statement here uh, says return zero. This value here is related to this, um, and this says what the function um, returns or gives back as a result. And so we'll talk about functions later. So um, for now, each one of our programs will have this line, int main opening brace, um, then at the bottom return zero and a closing brace, and then in between that, whatever um, commands that we want that program to uh, execute. All right. Now, let's see here. Um, what else should I tell you? Well, um, here, this um, symbol here, the uh, two uh, less than signs written together, is um, an example of an operator in C++. And um, we're going to learn about um, other operators um, coming up later on. For example, here's another operator, the plus sign which, as you can uh, uh, will probably guess, does addition. And here, 4 plus 5, we might call the operands, or the parameters to that operation or operator. Um, this particular operator here is uh, known as the stream insertion operator, or sometimes just the insertion operator. And it says to insert this value here into this stream here and see out as we um, talked about previously is your ability to um, do output or to connect to the uh, output and so this says insert this item into the output and so here this will take this expression and this won't output 4 plus 5 it'll output 9 now if we wanted to actually output 4 plus 5, we could put it inside of quotes, which means to, you know, literally um, send that as a uh, um, output. But if we say 4 plus 5 without the quotes, then the computer says, oh, well, in order to output that, I have to first figure out what that is. 4 plus 5, it says, oh, well, that's 9, and so then 9 gets output. Okay, let's see here. All right, the other um, important topic at the end of uh, chapter uh, one that I would um, like to talk about is the idea of, of algorithms. And uh, algorithm uh, and working with algorithms is kind of the heart of what we do as uh, programmers and computer scientists. And there's um, a couple of uh, examples of um, algorithms that I would like to um, discuss from the from the textbook and make sure of course to read the uh, textbook um, it's got a very nice discussion of it of algorithms and so let's start by looking at a couple of examples from the textbook first of all the textbook says here is um, some of the characteristics of an algorithm oh and by the way we might define algorithm as a step-by-step -step procedure that you can follow in order to achieve some kind of result now um, three characteristics of a good algorithm um, are that it is uh, one unambiguous or, or precise so that when you look at the direction you know exactly what it means um, and don't have questions about oh well how, how do I do that um, the second step is that it's executable um, so that it can be done in practice so for example if I said you know the executable uh, or the uh, an algorithm for deciding um, what you're going to uh, wear 
tomorrow is to first look ahead into the future and decide what the weather is going to be. That um, is not something that you could execute. But if instead I said, go to a website and look at a weather prediction, well, then, then that's something that you can do. So it uh, has to be executable. And then the last and very important um, um, step is, or, or requirement, is that the process eventually terminates and that there's usually clear about when you're done. So if, you know, if an algorithm to um, wash your hair says rinse and repeat, then obviously that's not a good algorithm um, because it's not clear when you're done. You know, maybe you just end when the, the, um, the uh, bottle's empty of, of uh, shampoo or conditioner. That's not, so that's not a very good algorithm. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples from the textbook. Um, and this first example um, says you put $10,000 into a bank account that earns 5% interest per year. How many years does it take for the account balance to double the original? And uh, that's a, a very nice problem. And later on, I'm actually going to ask you to write a computer program to solve that. Um, we don't yet know the commands that we would need in order to make the computer repeat something. So, But we'll be getting to that fairly soon. But you could solve it um, uh, by hand on paper. And of course, the, the um, textbook shows you how to do that. So um, at the beginning here in year zero, you start with $10,000. And then um, at the end of the first year, you multiply 5% by how much money you had, uh, $10,000, and you get $500, and you add the $500 into the $10,000 so that you have $10,500. And the next year, you start with $10,500 and multiply it by 5%, and so on. And you keep going until your um, balance that you um, calculate here is um, $20,000 or higher. And then um, the um, year that you achieve that in is, um, the, is your answer, the number of years that it takes. So this is unambiguous, it's precise, it's executable, and it terminates. And all of those conditions are quite clear. Now let's compare that against this other example from the textbook. Um, the value of pi can be co computed according to the following formula. Pi over 4 equals 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth. And then, and so on, this series continues with um, um, adding, alternately adding and subtracting uh, fractions where the um, denominator uh, is the next odd number. So um, it's unambiguous and precise, and it is executable, but when does it terminate? Well, here, um, it says because the formula is an infinite series, so already we're, you know, a little bit of a disadvantage. You know, to get a precise answer, we should continue this process infinitely. Um, so um, that's not going to uh, be an option. And so it says here, um, you should stop when you have the result determined to six significant digits. Well, that's not a very nice uh, 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 um example for this reason. If you were working this out on paper, then as you were doing the arithmetic, you could look and see when you had at least, you know, six um, um, places after the decimal. But how would we write a computer program to do that? And it could be done, of course, but that um, involves uh, um, some um, calculation or arithmetic that's actually quite difficult to do on a computer. And so I really like this example because as soon as we know the commands to kind of repeat a process, we'll be able to implement this. This one is only a good example on paper um, because if we tried to write a program to do that, figuring out when we got to six significant digits is actually a more difficult problem than the, the you know, implementing the rest of the algorithm. So, um, a little bit of unevenness here in, in the examples. I wanted to point point these out. I'll make sure you do take a look at the um, algorithm section in the um, textbook. Let me show you um, one other algorithm. This one is not um, in the textbook. Um, this is uh, one of my very favorite algorithms, and um, uh, I took this uh, information I'm showing you from the Wikipedia entry on algorithms, and. Um, this algorithm that's demonstrated here with a flowchart, which kind of shows you um, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, following through the algorithm and making decisions and so on, uh, it kind of in a, a picture or diagram form, uh, which is a very nice way to think about it and is something that a design like this will um, translate very well into a computer program. Um, this particular algorithm, uh, come up, um, devised by uh, Euclid, finds the greatest common divisor of two numbers. So that is the greatest, the largest number that divides equally into both of them. And um, this algorithm dates to uh, about um, 300 BCE. So it's 2,300 years old. Um, you know, obviously long before computers. When Euclid de developed this algorithm, um, he didn't use the words go to and, and so on, didn't use these terms or these symbols. Uh, this is a modern interpretation of that. Um, and so here, this algorithm meets um, all of our um, um, conditions. Um, it's uh, precise um, and it's executable. Each one of these steps is some very clear, um, simple arithmetic or a comparison that we can make and then determine whether that comparison is true or false. And it terminates. It's clear when the process is ending. So here we have a wonderful example of an algorithm. Okay, well that wraps up um, our lecture for um, today, and uh, thank you very much.